greetings once again the mercury cell mercury cell is another cell that produces hydrogen gas chlorine gas and sodium hydroxide so this cell is in addition to the other two cells that we learn in form 4 and that is the diaphragm cell and the membrane cell welcome to this video as we present the working of the cell and then we answer KCSE chemistry paper 2 as tested in the year 2000 in which mercury cell was tested as question number two welcome and stay on till the end of the video so we start with the raw materials needed for the cell and here we have two raw materials in the upper cell we have brine getting in and then at this point spent brine will finally come out and then if you look at the downer cell here through opening two we shall have water coming in so the mercury cell has brine as the electrolyte and then we also bring in water as a second raw material moving on we have graphite acting as anode and a moving mercury column that circulates between the lower cell and the upper cell being our cathode the movement of mercury is controlled by the pump uh, at this point so let us now have a look at the reactions that take place at anode and cathode so our electrolyte as has been discussed a few minutes ago is brine and brine contains four ions we have sodium ions which are highly concentrated we have chloride ions also in very high concentrations and then we have hydroxyl ions in very low concentrations and also hydrogen ions again in very low concentrations so at anode because chloride ions are highly concentrated we shall discharge chloride ions at anode and when we do so we are able to get chlorine gas accompanied by two moles of electrons and then we balance with a two on the chloride ions once chlorine gas has been liberated it is removed from the cell through our opening number one so what comes out here is chlorine gas moving on to the cathode because we are using a special material which is mercury we shall then discharge sodium ions through gain of one mole of electrons so once this sodium has been formed at the mercury cathode the sodium combines with mercury to form sodium mercury amalgam which is represented by the equation below sodium in liquid form combines with mercury again which is solid and we are able to form sodium mercury amalgam now once this amalgam has been formed 
it moves with the mercury column to our downer cell where we introduce water so when we introduce water water will react with the sodium mercury amalgam and we are able to get sodium hydroxide which can then move through this opening we are able to recycle our mercury and we also get hydrogen gas this we balance with a two on water a two on our sodium mercury amalgam a two on sodium hydroxide and a two on mercury so hydrogen gas then is able to leave through this opening in the downer cell mercury is recycled and that is how our cell works i'm being told that this cell is no longer in use because the sodium hydroxide obtained here tends to be contaminated again the cell has two disadvantages one of them being that cost of mercury is high and again mercury being a heavy metal is poisonous up to that point we are through with the working of the cell so we now welcome you to the second section of the video where we want to review questions that came touching on the cell and this was in the year 2000 so the first question for the year 2000 we are asked to name the raw material introduced at opening 2 and we have just talked about it the answer expected here was distilled water for one mark then for roman 1 part 2 the examiner asked us to name another substance that can be used in the cell instead of graphite remember graphite is acting as our anode and the expected answer here was platinum the reason is graphite and platinum don't react with our electrolyte roman 2 identify the by product that comes out at 1 1 is up here and we have agreed that through opening 1 this is where chlorine gas comes out through so chlorine gas was the expected answer for another one mark for roman 3 we were told to give one use of sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide has several uses including manufacture manufacture of soaps and even detergents sodium hydroxide can also be used to manufacture bleaches and sodium hydroxide is also used to manufacture drugs the examiner only expected one use so a student had the option of choosing between those three so we move on to the next question next question is asking the student to give two reasons why mercury is recycled so we recycle mercury to reduce to reduce running costs remember we have just said that mercury is very expensive and then the second reason is to avoid mercury poisoning The last question and that is part B this is now testing on the quantitative treatment of electrolysis or what we normally call the Faraday's law so we are asked a current of 100 amperes 
was passed through the cell for five hours. Write equations for the reaction that occurred at the mercury cathode. So at cathode, we have just seen a case where sodium ions are being discharged and we are able to get sodium as liquid. Then two, we also ask to write the equation for the reaction in which sodium hydroxide is produced. So here, the sodium mercury amalgam is reacted with water in the downer cell and we are able to produce sodium hydroxide. We are able to recycle our mercury and we are able to get hydrogen gas as well. So to get the one mark, we need to balance with a two on the amalgam, a two on water, a two on sodium hydroxide and a two on mercury. And then finally, based on these two equations, we are now told to calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide that was produced. So because of space, I'll introduce a new working area and for us to get the mass of sodium hydroxide that was produced, we need to review our two equations that we have just written. So here are our equations. The first equation, at cathode, we are discharging one mole of sodium ions to give us one mole of sodium. In equation two, the sodium formed is mixed with mercury to form sodium mercury amalgam. The conclusion here is also that one mole of sodium is able to give us one mole of sodium mercury amalgam. The moment we have formed the sodium mercury amalgam, we shall react it with water to get sodium hydroxide. Here, one mole of sodium mercury amalgam is giving us one mole of sodium hydroxide since the mole ratio is one is to one. So the overall conclusion one makes out of these three equations is that one mole of sodium ions is actually able to give us finally one mole of sodium hydroxide. Let us now proceed to relating the discharge of sodium ions to the quantity of electricity. So here, because I have one mole of electrons involved, I will have one Faraday being used and this will give me one mole of sodium hydroxide because we've just said that one mole of sodium ions is able to give us one mole of sodium hydroxide. Now, one Faraday is equivalent to 96,500 coulombs, and this is able to give me 40 grams of sodium hydroxide, because molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 23 for sodium, added to 16 for oxygen, and 1 for hydrogen. I'll be able to get 40 grams if one Faraday of electricity is used. Now getting back to my question, I want to get now the quantity of electricity used as per the question. And Q is normally given by IT, where I is current in amperes and T is time in seconds. So my current is 100 amperes. T is 5 hours, which I have to change into seconds by multiplying by 60 to change into minutes and another 60 to change into seconds. This gives me 1,800,000 coulombs. Then my, first argu my last argument would be that if 96,500 coulombs was able to give me 40 grams of sodium hydroxide. How about 1,800,000 coulomb? How much sodium hydroxide would I get? Cross multiplication, 
gives us 1,800,000 multiplied by 40 divided by 96,500. And the answer is 746.1 grams of sodium hydroxide. All that for four marks. And candidates, up to that point, we are through with our video. In this video, we have presented the mercury cell. We've gone ahead to look at its raw materials. We've also discussed how it works. We've also given you some of the disadvantages associated with the cell. We wish you all the best in your revision and we thank you so much for being our valued viewer.